Welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing good profits and bad profits. What are bad profits? Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performers Performers Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of of your life life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash peak performers. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. That website address again, www.audibletrial.com forward slash peak performers. And you can also find a link in the show notes. This question actually came in from Maureen in Scottsdale. And Maureen asks, how do I know if I have bad profits? Well, let's, let's first define what bad profits yes, are. Yes, let's. Okay. I'm, I'm sure many of the listeners don't understand what bad profits are. This was a term that was coined by Fred Reicheld. He wrote a book called The Ultimate Question. And really what he contends here is that bad profits are all those shady deals, those hidden costs, those confusing price structures, all the little things that companies kind of sneak in at the last minute and they just kind of they're tough to find what they are airlines are notorious for doing this it's like you have a fee is uh to fly from tulsa to uh new york is a buck 50 but then it's 35 dollars to check your bag and then it's eight dollars for the sandwich and then oh you want to be able to get a seat and reserve a seat ahead of time that's an extra 20 dollars. so there's all these additional fees that they throw in so then that would be those fees would be like bad profits for the airline? Yes, it'd be bad profits for the airline. Because and, and it turns a customer off? Absolutely. Okay. You know, your cell phone bill is another great example of this. You know, Hotels, you make a reservation, oh, then there's some sort of fee even, or some sort start, of maintenance. Yeah. or It's not even maintenance. It's something resort that you don't fee. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah resort, resort fee. Right, right. Yeah, plus the uh, 35% tax on, on top of that. So here's, here's the question. The real question here is, well, one, I wanted to define what uh, bad profits were. And they're becoming more and more popular. And I don't think they're a good idea. I'll give you an example in, uh, in my life. Recently went and had some work done on one of my uh, cars. And I was having new tires put on, new rims uh, put on. And they were doing some work. Um, no, they weren't actually doing any brake work. But they, they asked, they said, you know, the brake calibers are really dirty would you like us to clean, uh, cl- clean and then paint the uh, calibers? And I said, sure, you know, that, that makes sense. You have the tires off, everything, make, make them look nice. And with the rims, it, it showed through. And um, I said, sure, go ahead. And I said, hey, w- would, you like a, uh, would you like a sticker? On, uh, look, it's going to look really nice. It's, it's the uh, caliber is going to be black, shiny black. And then we have this nice little sticker on there. And th- this was uh, my Mercedes. And they said it would say Mercedes and it would kind of jump off and it, you know, jump out and it would look really nice. So I'm like, sure, you know, that, that, that's, uh, that's fine. So then I got the bill, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, a sticker, okay? How much could a sticker be? They charged me $25 a piece, $100 for these stickers, okay? I'm like, no way. All right, I, you already paid at the calibers, so that's fine. I, I think that was like 10 bucks. I was fine with that. But 25 bucks for the sticker? I'm like, take the stickers off. There's no way I'm paying $25 for a sticker. Did they take the stickers off? They did. They did. I wouldn't have paid $25 a sticker either. Now, I didn't ask how much it was ahead of time. Which, so, is, which was your which fault. Is, which is my bad. But the bottom line is, what do most people do? They ain't get, they ain't get the bill at the end. They're not even looking at how much the sticker was or the valve stem or the disposal fee, and there's all kinds of different things in there. Mm. And don't even get me started on disposal fees. When you go get your oil changed, what do they do? 
They charge you a disposal For fee the on the oil. oil filter, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, what do they do with that oil that they take out of your car? Oh, it's for the oil. I, what do they do with it? Oh, they sell it. Do they really? Of course they do. As what? They sell it. They clean it. Gets it. Re, it gets recycled. They recycle it gets reused. It. Mm. it may not become motor oil again, but it'll go into different products. Now they're even using it in the, uh, the biodiesel fuels and, and so okay. forth. Okay. Okay. But the I bottom line that. is they're double dipping. They're paying you and charging you, for charging it. you a, a fee to, to make profit somewhere else. Right. It's an environmental, dis, you know, disposal fee, mm-hmm. and then they're selling it on the opposite opposite end. Mm-hmm. Now let's take that scenario and contrast it to another experience I had just last week. I took my other car and the uh, the Jeep. I needed some work done, and the mechanic gave me a, a quote of a thousand dollars for all this work that he he did. Left it there. Came back, I was gone for a week, came back, it was all done, it was cleaned. And he said, you know, I got to tell you, I, said, I made a mistake. He said, I gave you the quote, went through everything, and literally when I was adding everything up, I forgot to include the oil change. He goes, that was my bad. I gave you a quote of $1,000, I'm sticking to the 1000 I'm just going to eat the, the oil change. Now, where am I going to go back and where am I going to do business? Mm-hmm. Right. Right? And... The tire place was a $3,000 bill. So bad profits. These are the things that you stick in there at the end that are very profitable because they're generally, you know, zero cost mar- or cost of goods uh, sold on these items. They're pure profit. But what do they do? They piss your client off and you do not want to be pissing off your clients. So your real question was, how do I know if I have bad profits? Mm-hmm. First, I'd identify what bad profits were. This is how you know if you have bad profits. Look over your procedures. Look over your services. Look over how you're charging your customers. Is there anything buried in there that is kind of difficult or shows up at the last minute that the customer was not anticipating? Listen to your customers. Are they complaining about any of these fees? That's a great way to find out. And I highly, highly recommend that if you're sticking these fees on, and you're pissing off clients, you are doing yourself a disservice. Don't do that. If you want to charge $500 instead of $450, charge $500. But put it in there. Stop playing this game. And if there's something that you have to pay for and you need to pass the cost on to the customer, then if there's a way or in a different area you can save on something, pass the savings on to the customer and tell them that you've done that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just say, we don't do this because we really want to save you money, and this is how we do it. Transparency really helps their customers appreciate that. Absolutely. I mean, look at look at what the airlines do with the uh, the baggage fees. Is that a cost that they need to pass along to you? Is it costing them money I, to I put it on? I don't even know. It, no. It what? used to not. It used to be free. Right, because what happened is one airline decided to lower their, their cost of their ticket, so they showed up in the system as... Oh, we're only Baggage 150 fee. versus mm, okay. 200. Okay, right. And then everybody started flocking to that airline and they just had the baggage fee. Okay. Then everybody had to follow suit. Now, unless you're in an industry where everyone's doing the same thing, but as far as I'm concerned, concerned if the industry is running in one direction, run in the other direction. If I'm a hotel, no resort fee ever. Just tell them. If you can control that, yeah. You're looking for your point of differentiation value to your customer absolutely and nobody that i know enjoys hidden fees good luck maureen thanks thank you so much for listening today i really do appreciate your time and i hope you found today's show valuable if you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer simply go to itunes and subscribe after listening to several of the shows If you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at thorconklin.com and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners. And if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. 
You can follow me at Twitter, at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.